Hey, what's up YouTube? All right, in this video, I wanted to do a quick little synopsis on my theory of kayaks and leashes, okay? Kayaks and leashes. I got you now. He almost got me. Aswamalaika. All right, YouTube, okay. So I decided to make this one on my phone real quick, real fast, and try to give you my ideology on leashes, okay? So, you know, uh, I've got a weird theory on leashes. You know, if you've watched my channel for very long, you know I've lost rods, pliers, all kinds of random junk. And that's just kayak fishing. You're gonna lose stuff. So I put floats on what I can, and I'll leash certain things like my fish grips and my pliers. So check this out. So here's my pliers right here. They're leashed down here on my on my outback handle. That is the leash for my pliers, okay? So my other leash is this right here. And when it gets real rough and scary, I clip it onto my life vest. So if I go overboard, I got a little ability to catch the kayak. Because in rough water, this thing gets away from you, you ain't catching it. You just ain't catching it. I don't care how fast you can swim. So just a quick rundown. You know, I just tie a leash somewhere over here or to here. And that way it'll reach that one and it'll reach that one. And it tends to work quite well. You know, I have multiple rod holders here and uh, they work well. And I've got a good video on how this was put together. My other leash is really a cheap and not the best way to do it, but I put it right here on the handle or on my seat. And that way it can reach over to where my crate is right here, or it can reach up front. And I just literally tie a little slip knot on it. And that way I can take it off quick. Now, the reason why the reason why I'm not a big proponent, I guess you could say, or a, I'm not very big on leashes is because when you roll a kayak in big water or you have to bail or it's the water is really fast and that boat weighs like a hundred and something pounds completely rigged out, you are like in a cast net of leashes when you're underneath it and the kayak is on top of you and the water is just flailing all over the place and odds are you're not going to be able to get back in the boat because you're going to get hung on every leash you got because the rods are in the water and they're floating like spider webs everywhere so they wind up in my opinion being more dangerous than they're worth because if you don't have a knife on you you're not cutting 550 cord or parachute cord or whatever you've got keeping these leashes on your kayaks to your poles um, so just remember when that kayak rolls and those lines are in the water are you gonna be able to get back in the kayak are they gonna get hung on you and do you have a knife to cut these things free because it can be really dangerous really fast if you can't get back in the boat or you can't untangle yourself because you got hooks flying or whatever it's another good thing take your hooks off before you go back to the break just saying. Um, now, if you're just a pond guy and it's not quick water and you want to leash the, the pole, go ahead. I just go ahead and put floats on mine. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You're not constantly fighting leashes. Just my opinion. Um, if y'all got anything to add to this, just put it in the comments below. You know, we're just trying to, just trying to share knowledge with the internet. Taking a, vi a little break, taking a video break away from the vlogs that I usually create to try to put some good information out there to help y'all. You know, I don't really believe in buying expensive kayak stuff or leashes. I just feel like it's against the whole kayak life. It's supposed to be cheap and efficient and anybody can do it. So I just use parachute cord, 550 cord that you get from this kind of stuff that you get from Walmart. It's just green cord. You use any type of string. Rob uses orange fluorescent corn or cord he got from the twine store, Walmart, in the twine department or something, and it works for him. So keep it cheap, keep it easy, and uh, 
don't always fall for all these, uh, you know, gear accessories that everybody's wanting to put out there now because everybody is taking the DIY guy out of it. Just make it yourself for free with some string you got around the house and you'll be perfectly happy. <laughs> So, so here's like an example of what one of my fishing rods look like. This is a big rod and reel. You know, this, this is not really something I would use on my kayak, but it's suited. It's equipped to go on my kayak. I put this big float on it. My 850, I got a big float on it. My Pen 850 and my Jig Master's got a float on it. And I've got a couple on my Abu Garcia's. And I just put pool noodles on there, zip tie them, get weird with zip ties and some duct tape and what you'll have is ability for it to float and you can just pick it back up. Now, you won't be able to see it in the dark most of the time, so that's just part of the game. And just remember, kayak fishing, you're gonna lose stuff. Just keep a hold of it and hopefully you don't lose too much. I haven't had rods really pop out of rod holders because of fish hitting them. I did lose one because my, my rope pulled one of the rods out of the rod holder. So, you know, that's why I buy yard sale gear, not expensive gear, cool. Today I wanted to do a thing on leashes because the first thing people always tell me when I lose a rod is you should have leashed it. Well that's not always the answer because leashes can be dangerous. And that's why I don't, you know, always leash things is because I don't like how dangerous a leash can be when you fall out of your kayak and it's tangled on your life vest or around your leg or your arm or your head or your neck. You know, I'm not trying to get hung out here guys. So I'll see you later.